Hurricane Beryl set to devastate the Caribbean over the next few days on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 30th. Well, the Atlantic is uh, very much in control once again, with Hurricane Beryl becoming an extremely powerful storm already, and now believed to be a major Category 3 storm as it moves towards the west-northwest towards the Lesser Antilles. An extremely dangerous storm with hurricane warnings in effect on day 30 of Atlantic hurricane season. Behind it, another area of interest that could itself become a hurricane and follow pretty much the same track as Beryl, and another area of interest with a 40% chance in the Bay of Campeche that has a small window of development. In the Eastern Pacific, we have another area of interest, a 30% chance, and those chances are increasing here. We could finally see our first storm of the season off the coast of Mexico next week, uh, or later in the week, uh, as we take a look at a pretty desolate basin right now. The Western Pacific is still quiet as well, over just a few thunderstorms along the southern and western sides of the Philippines, uh, but in general, we're really not looking at anything forming there in the next five days and beyond that as well. So the Western Pacific is quiet and equally the North Indian Ocean is also um, looking pretty um, quiet as well. There's just a few thunderstorms, large scale storms blowing up off the coast of eastern India. A lot of monsoonal type showers across the whole region. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, for what it's worth, in the Southern Hemisphere, indeed, it is the last day of the 23-24 season, as it were, and we'll finally change the names to next year's list, or this winter's list in the Northern Hemisphere, summer in the Southern Hemisphere, as things start to change again. Well, let's take a look at Beryl then. It is a Category 3 right now, estimated with winds of 115 miles per hour, possibly even stronger than that. It is currently 540 kilometers from Paramaribo. 688 from Barbados, 797 from Trinidad, 864 from St. Lucia, and 981 from Dominica. Hurricane warnings in effect for Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and for Grenada. Tropical storm warnings either side of that, and still a tropical storm watch in Dominica. Um, <clears throat> I'm not fully sure whether those uh, warnings will change at all at the upcoming 8 a.m. advisory. This update doesn't uh, came out before that, so I'm not sure whether that will happen yet or not. So let's take a look at this storm on satellite imagery and it is becoming an extremely fearsome hurricane uh, and really the sky's the limit for the next uh, couple of days as the storm continues to push through very good conditions and they clearly have been when we take a look at this satellite imagery of the eye clearing out and continuous banding around it uh, cloud tops blowing up there the rapid scan looking even more formidable there with an eye temperature probably approaching uh, the positives and looking at an extremely dangerous storm recon are investigating it right now there are planes in the storm as of this update uh, we've only managed to get the first few readings by the time this update was produced so it may end up being stronger than what we're expecting but the data shows that it is probably at least 115 miles per hour. There's its longer term movement there and progression from uh, NOAA star uh, showing its movement has stayed fairly to the south there, only just north of west on that latest uh, view. Uh, so at the moment it does look as though uh, that northwesterly turn hasn't happened yet, although we are expecting just a little bit more of a northwesterly turn later on in the day. More visuals here from the Force 13 website, and you can take a look at these and follow along on the Force 13 website, force13.com slash satellite. We also have our automated stream that's running all the time right now, 24-7. We're trying to keep it updated as much as possible. And we are running a live event, an hour of discussion uh, at uh, 10 a.m. Atlantic Standard Time this morning, and I expect we'll have more coverage in the evening overnight tonight. This is a wide shot of the Atlantic off the coast of the uh, eastern United States. Things are rather quiet here big frontal system moving up along uh, all of the central united states there up towards the northeast looking south into the caribbean there you can see that other area of interest 94l on the left hand side that's in the bay of campeche now blowing up some thunderstorms and possibly some loose rotation 
You can see barrel obviously there and just how relatively small it is, especially for its intensity. Uh, but it is looking very good once again on this satellite imagery as it moves west or just north of west. And there's the Eastern Pacific rumblings of that new system. We haven't really seen it take shape yet, but we do expect it will form probably just on the bottom end of that little tail of cloud. Western Pacific looking like this, it's generally quite quiet around the Philippine Islands there, quite a few thunderstorms, uh, small scale stuff, we're not really seeing any major uh, tropical disturbances. And this is the Indian Ocean with a big flank of uh, very heavy precipitation I expect there moving through southern India right up towards the Ganges River Delta. And there's the Arabian Sea showing a few more monsoonal showers off the west coast of India and Pakistan moving up towards the coast of Oman. Well, sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific still look pretty good. Where this area of interest is forming, it will start off at around 30 degrees Celsius and start to decrease as it moves northwest, which means it won't have that long a time to spend. In the Atlantic, of course, ahead of Beryl, those temperatures are still only around 28 degrees Celsius and they will increase when it enters the eastern Caribbean to 29 or maybe 30 degrees. Real hot spots off the coast of Florida right now pushing close to 32. Western Pacific has a large area of 30 to 32 degrees Celsius waters, mainly off the Philippines to the west and east and northwards there up through Taiwan and the southernmost Ryukyu Islands. And in the North Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal has one or two hot spots there too, and the, as does the Arabian Sea with maximums of around 30 or 31 degrees. Compared to average, what does it all look like? The Atlantic is certainly well above average in a large part of it. Where Beryl is, it's probably around 2 to 3 degrees above the normal. In the eastern Pacific, it's actually a little bit hit and miss there, a few areas above average, but a significant cool pool near the Baja California Peninsula. Western Pacific is looking good, almost all of it above average, especially in the 20 to 30 degree uh, north range. So looking pretty good up there. O Oceanic heat content looks like this. The Western Pacific still has a huge amount of energy there. Tons of it, as a matter of fact. The Eastern Pacific, not quite so much. When you look at that imagery there, it looks like it's really uh, struggling. But there are a few spots out to see there that have some significant amounts of energy. And I'm afraid looking at the Atlantic, it's the whole track ahead of Beryl that has very high amounts of oceanic heat content. So, uh, whether the storm well, it looks like it will start weakening later on in the forecast as we get towards day 3, 4 and 5. But could there be renewed strengthening when it passes Jamaica into the Western Caribbean? We're not sure yet. Well, this is the latest GFS model, although you might want to throw it out the window because it only forecasts a storm peak of around 974 millibars, and it's probably already stronger than that. Behind that, you've got another storm moving through, obviously, that's Invest 96L, and that also becomes a hurricane according to this model, although other models haven't really gotten on board with it fully yet, which is why it's still only at 60% on our books here. But uh, as for Bell, moving into Jamaica, calling for a landfall there as a hurricane, and then on towards the Yucatan Peninsula, maybe near Cozumel and Cancun towards the end of that five day period. Now this is the Eastern Pacific looking out for this tropical storm forming. It does so around about the 3rd, 4th of July. Uh, so it does manage to become uh, a significant storm there getting towards 50, 60 miles per hour. Of course, if that does happen um, and even if that does take place, it will be uh, confined to the latest start to the Eastern Pacific since 1964, which is quite something. Uh, looking at rainfall expectations then over the next seven days and you'll see the trail from Beryl first of all and then behind it you'll see another trail uh, moving almost over exactly the same track. That's the second storm and so if that does happen then we'll be looking at some areas getting very high amounts of rainfall and the answer really will be Jamaica. Looking there at maximum rainfall expectations possibly reaching 15 or 16 inches that's 400 millimeters. I have to say though the rainfall expectations have gone down a little bit overall from both of those storms uh, but still we're looking at wherever they track really significant amounts off to the west there as well over Vera Cruz we could be looking at 13 inches now this is the late later part of the model run fi day 5 to 10 GFS does want Beryl to hit Texas possibly as a hurricane there and the storm behind it as well that continues to survive and also hits that same area too so really fascinating to see what happens in that longer range model run but I've got to tell you uh, forecasting one storm beyond five days is pretty uncertain trying to do it with two in the same picture I 
would say is extremely uncertain and we'll have to check up with updates regularly. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt still available right now as we are still waiting for that blasted storm in the Central Pacific. Well, in the silly range, there's not too much else to look at. Just that landfall once again of 96L that would be moving westward into Texas, just south of Galveston. It dies off very quickly. Maybe a weak uh, low pressure system or two in the eastern Pacific again. Maybe a possible tropical depression. Uh, but apart from that, in that very long range period, we actually don't have very much to look at. So just to reiterate once again, Beryl expected to possibly hit Jamaica on that model run through the Cayman Islands, through the northern Yucatan, and 96L behind it moving through the Eastern Caribbean over pretty much the same areas and just a little bit further east later on in that model run. Well, let's take a look at what happened on this day, and you may remember it well. It was the uh, kickoff to the 2010 Atlantic hurricane season, where we had another major hurricane, Alex, which was making landfall in northern Mexico, uh, not very far from the border with Texas. A powerful storm that caused significant flooding problems in that region up there, Tamaulipas and Nuevo Leon, uh, as it moved inland over northern Mexico. A powerful storm and uh, could have really struck strengthen quite a bit more if it had a bit more time uh, but there it was hurricane alex and that fantastic radar imagery of it so beryl becomes the first major hurricane of the atlantic hurricane season and of the northern hemisphere this year so far the next name in the atlantic is chris in the eastern pacific we're still waiting for a letter and in the central pacific we're exasperated still waiting for hone as we have been for five years in the Western Pacific, the next name is Gamey, and in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Asna. So, so far, we've had very few storms in the Northern Hemisphere, but once again, it goes to show that uh, numbers aren't everything, and Beryl is on its way to intensifying and likely to become a Category 4 plus in the next few days. Robin's next stop in the Australian region, Jeremy in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and Pitta in the South Pacific. We'll be live at 10 a.m. Atlantic Standard Time. Become an ultimate fan today.